Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you. God, we praise you now. We worship you now. We, we honor you, Father God, for you are good and you are God. We thank you for another Sunday morning, another Lord's day. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this privilege to honor you and you alone. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us today. Bless us to hear from you, Lord. Bless us to obey your word. Bless us to walk in your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the listeners. We thank you for the attendees. We pray, Father God, that you minister to us in a mighty way. Bless us today, Father God, that as we move forward in your name, that old habits will be rolled away, old burdens will be thrown away, that we will be better at 12 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock, that you will get the glory, Lord, Amen. and that your son will be lifted up, Amen. that you will get the glory, Lord, Amen. and that your Holy Spirit will rule and super rule, that you, Father God, will get the glory, Amen. and that we will act like we know you, Amen. and that our lives will reflect Jesus the Christ. To the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Thank the name of Jesus. He has given us another privilege, I tell you. He's given us another chance to come again to praise his, his awesome name. Amen. We're looking today at Nehemiah chapter 8. In the Old Testament, Nehemiah chapter 8, we'll pick up just about where we left off last week. Nehemiah chapter 8, we'll begin at verse number 8, and we will end at verse number 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 8 through number 12. We praise the Lord for what he has done and what he is doing even right now. Nehemiah chapter 8. Verses number 8 through 12. Nehemiah 8, 8 through 12. Nehemiah chapter 8 in the Old Testament. The book is Nehemiah. The chapter is 8. The verses are 8 through 12. When you found it, you will discover these words. So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this is, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. I want to talk about the strength of the Lord's word. Amen. The strength of the Lord's word. Many of us have heard from time to time that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We recite these phrases, we recite this declarative, and we do not realize where it has come from. Yes, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is, is our strength. The joy of the Lord is what we, 
We rejoice in the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Certainly, certainly today we need joy. Do you need joy? Yes. Have you been searching for joy? Yes. Are you in need of joy even right now? Yes. Have you been perplexed in your life and you need God to, to bless you and God to keep you? No, you're right. Have you been at a point in your life where you really need the joy of the Lord? I submit to you today, the strength of the Lord's word is what we need. We need God's strength. We need God's word. We need God's word to keep us. If we're going to be kept, we're going to be kept only by God's word. When we look at Nehemiah, we find a group of people who knew God. A group of people who were God's chosen people. A group of people who stood by God and God stood by them. However, they found themselves like Houstonians. They found themselves at a point in their lives wow. where they turned away from the Almighty God. Wow. Wow. Let me just share with you this morning, it is a dangerous thing yes. to turn away from the Almighty God. I say to you this morning, this morning I want to say to you, it is dangerous, it is, it is terribly dangerous for you to turn your back on the God who made you. Yes, it is. It's a dangerous thing to turn your mind, turn your focus away from the God who has kept you. you know it. It's a dangerous thing to turn to idol gods as they have done in Judah and Jerusalem as well as Judea. Yes, you're right. They had turned their faces away from God. They had left God. They began to hang out with the idol God worshipers. They began to hang out with those who didn't know their God. They began to hang out with those who worship gods who were made of statues. They began to hang out with those who worship gods that was made of wood and metal. They began to hang out with gods who, who had hands and couldn't feel. All right. They hung out with gods who, who had a head and couldn't think. Yeah, okay. They hung out with people who worshiped God, who had an a, a imitation of heart oh, no. and could not feel yeah. their affection. Yeah. Not only that, they had left their original language. Mm -hmm. They did not keep the language that was given to them by their foreparents. All right. Let me tell you, some traditions should be wiped away. But there are customs we need to hang out with. No, you're right. There are customs that we need to stick to. There are customs that we need to continue through. And we as a nation has done a bad job in keeping the customs of our forefathers. All right. Stuff like worshiping God regardless of what we go through. Things like making a difference where everybody in the neighborhood can say something to your children. We have passed down stuff from our generation to this generation, but we have forgotten the God who has brought us. Right, if Big Mama was living today, she would say it like this, the same bridge that brought me here yes. is the same bridge I'm going to take to get out of here. Yes. We need to understand it was God that has kept us. Yes, through the civil rights movement, through Jim Crow, God has kept us. Yes. And now we got Brooke Brothers suits. Now we got Stacy and Adam. Now, now we got Louis and Vuitton. We Now we got Liz Claiborne. And now we have walked away from God. Yeah. We make more money than our foreparents have ever made. Right. We live in houses that our foreparents never dreamed about. Yes, we have walked and fallen away from God. Yes, sir. That's how it is in the text. That's how it is in the text. God warned them before they made it to Canaan. He warned them, when you get over yonder, whatever you do, don't become as they are. Don't begin to worship idol gods. And they did just what God asked them not to do. So now Jerusalem is torn down. The, the gates have been burnt up. Now uh, Nehemiah has made a trip back to his homeland to make a contribution. Let me just say to you today, you, be, you need to remember where you came from. You need to remember where you came from because if you don't remember from which you have come, then you are doing yourself in your neighborhood a terrible disservice. 
You ought to be willing to give back. You ought to be willing to talk about your country. You ought to be willing to, to do what you can do to make a difference. God deliver me from young people who are ashamed of their parents. God deliver me from young people who, who think their parents and their grandparents are old folk. God deliver me from young folk who think that because they got a degree on the wall, because they got a little edge of vacation, they've gotten to a point that they are above those who made a way. All right. Let me just stop by to remind you that it was those older people yeah. who, who afforded, who could not afford, and that they made a way to afford your education. Yes, sir. And so we have to remember the God in the people who has brought us thus far. When we look at the text, we remember, I talked to you on last week, please remember with me that Ezra stood up and he blessed all the people. He blessed the people in the Lord. The Bible says they showed up like one man. The Bible says they showed up in unity. The Bible says they showed up as a group. And, and the Bible says that if they chose not to show up, they would be cut off from God's blessing. Let me just share with you today, we ought to show up before God. We ought to show up before God. We ought to make sure that we have God on our agenda. Do you have God on your agenda? Do you have God on your schedule? Do you have God in your quiet time or do you have a quiet time? Do you have God on your agenda? We need to make sure that God is a part of our itinerary. We need to make sure we have quality, quiet time along with God where God can speak to us and we can speak to God. So they left God. Ezra brings them together, begins to read the book of the law, begins to read the law of God. And as he began to read the law of the Lord, the people got convicted. They got convicted of their sins. They got convicted because they had walked away from God. They got convicted. Let me tell you, when you get convicted, you will repent. All right. When you get convicted, you will turn away from your sin. Right. When you get convicted, you will leave your stuff alone. When you get convicted, you will begin to do it God's way. Oh, yes. right. The Bible said the people got so convicted until they fell, they fell on the ground with their faces on the ground. They began to honor God and repent of their sins. When we look at Nehemiah chapter 8, beginning at verse number 8, our text for today, we will find out in Nehemiah chapter 8, beginning at verse number 8, that the leaders stood up and they read the word and they interpreted the word. The Bible says that even though Ezra read the word, the leaders stood up and they read the word, they interpreted the word, they delivered the word, they read it distinctly. They read it with understanding. And so the people began to understand. Let me just say to you today that you must understand it's not enough for the preacher to read the word. Yes, sir. It's not enough for the people, the people to receive the word from the preacher. But every born again soul, everybody who loves the Lord has to receive the word of God and have to deliver the word of God. Are you delivering the word in your neighborhood? Are you delivering the word on your job? Are you delivering the word to those who need to hear the word? Don't get with those who walk with the Lord and impress each other. We have to make sure that those who don't know the word will hear the word through us. Let me just stop by to tell you, even if you're not a leader in the church, you're a leader for the Lord. And because you are a leader for the Lord, you need to read the word distinctly and you need to make sure that others understand the word. Now, in order for you to make sure that others understand the word, you've got to understand the word yourself. All right. The Bible says, and my first point, my first point is rely on the word. Rely on the word. Rely on the word. Rely on God's word. Rely on the Lord's word. Rely on the word. If you're going to rely on anything, you need to rely on the word. That's why when you're in a conflict, you need to look and see what the Lord says about it. If, if things are not going right with you and your neighbor, look and see what the word says about it. If things are not going right in your home, look and see what the word of God says about it. And as you look to see what the word of God says about it, you will understand real clearly that you have to rely on the word. 
The word of God is quick. The word of God is sharp. The word of God pierces even between the marrow and the bone. The word of God is what we have to rely on. Right, if you're confused, rely on the word. If you're happy, rely on the word. If you're distraught, rely on the word. If you're depressed, rely on the word. How many times have you been in depression and you pulled out to see what the word says? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We have to rely on the word. If we're going to have joy, we have to rely on the word. The Bible says that they, they read the word. And when they read the word, they read it and gave sense to the word. You see, the word doesn't make sense to a lot of people. The word does not make any sense to a lot of people, but the, the God that we serve is looking forward to us making sense of the word. You have to make sense. You have to interpret it for some folk, and you have to know it for yourself. So you have to rely on the word. The Bible said that they gave sense to the word, and they helped them to understand the reading. The Bible says that they help them. They help, they help them to understand the reading. Now, those of you who are good old Christians for the Lord, those of you who love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, right. you need to be responsible for somebody else knowing the word of God. Amen. So you have to rely on the word. Verse number nine says, says to us that, that Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, who was the priest and the scribe, and then the Levites, they, they who taught the people said to all the people, this is the holy day of the Lord God. This is the holy day of the Lord your God. So it says to us today that we need to understand that there are some people who are with God. There are some people standing for God and they need to be reminded of the God we serve. All right. All right. So my second point to you today is that you need to reflect on the word. You need to not only rely on the word, but you need to reflect on the word. You need to meditate on the word. You need to, you need to interpret the word. You need to deliver the word. I'm telling you, you need to reflect on the word of God. It says it right there in the text. Right there in the text, it declares that in verse number 9, that Nehemiah, Ezra, and the Levites, they delivered the word to the people, and they had to reflect on the word. How many times a day do you reflect on the word? How many times a day do you look at the word of God, reflect on it, and look at it over and over again? Because when you reflect on the word, you will understand that this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, sir. This is the day that we ought to rejoice and be glad in him. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we need to rejoice and be glad in him simply because when we reflect on the word, the Lord our God blesses us through the word. Yes, sir. He, says, he, says, he, says, he says in the text, he, he, uh, Nehemiah is telling the story, and Nehemiah says that they told the people, don't moan right now. He says, don't, don't moan right now. Don't even get caught up in your grief right now. There ought to be a moment that you set aside simply for the word of God, even in your grief, even in your depression, even in your moments when you're going through, you need to make sure you reflect on the word of God. He says, do not moan, do not weep. For all the people wept when they heard the word of God. I want to talk about responding to the word of God. So you need to rely on the word. You need to reflect on the word, and then you need to respond to the word. The Bible says when they heard the word of the Lord, they responded. When they heard the word of the Lord, the Bible says they began to weep. They began to moan because the word of God reminded them of their mistakes. All right. The word of God reminded them of where they had fallen short. The word of God reminded them where they missed the mark. So we need to understand, not only should we rely on the word, not only should we reflect on the word, but we have to respond to the word. Yes, sir. And let me tell you, when, when you get to a point where you're truly repentant, when you're truly, truly, really, really repentant, it will cause you to weep sometimes. Yes, 
It will cause you to moan sometimes. It, it will cause you to, to get all caught up in your feelings sometimes. And I'm not talking about getting caught up in your feelings as the songwriter would say. I'm talking about getting caught up in what God is saying to you. And when God says something to you, God is able to bless you, but he blesses you through the word. You see, the word is clear. The word is accurate. The word is relevant. It's God's word that we need to depend on. So the Bible says they responded to the word. They responded to the word because they began to weep. They began to moan. They began to get caught up in their feelings. Let me tell you, the word of God is so good. The word of God is so solid yes, sir. until it can pull the best out of you yes, sir. <laughs> as it re relieves you from the worst in you. Oh, God, God. Let me tell you, the word of God is so powerful. The word of God speaks to us in such a way until the word pulls the best out of us yeah. as we're going through our worst. So if you're going through something right now, if you're going through something right now, you need to make sure you respond to the word. And don't get, don't, don't get so down on yourself when other folks see you responding to the word. Yes, sir. I remember I used to watch a lady every Sunday. And, uh, and her daughter was sitting next to her. And her daughter was, was terribly embarrassed because every Sunday, the, uh, Miss Lindsay would get happy. Yeah. And, and she would be rejoicing because of the word of God. Her daughter would drop her head. Her daughter would lower her head and, and drop her head because she was embarrassed because every Sunday she knew her classmates was looking and waiting on Miss Liz in the shout. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, don't get, don't, don't, don't get distraught. <laughs> don't, don't get beside yourself because it's the word of God that keeps us. Yes, sir. It's the word of God that blesses us. All right. So we ought to respond to the word. Reverend Al Sharpton tells the story. And he says that every Sunday he went to church, his, his mama would, would hear the preacher preaching. And he would know when she's about to go in. Because mama would, would slip to the edge of her seat. And as the preacher con pre continued to preach, his mama would lean to the side. And he knew that she was about to go into praise and worship because before you knew it, not only would she slip to the edge of her seat, she would lean to the side. She would stand up and she would make a noise and a cry out before the Lord and respond to the word. Yeah. Yeah. So one day, Reverend Al Sharpton invited his friends to come to church with him. So he figured he would, he would prep his mama and let her know that he didn't want her to be embarrassing him. So he said, now mama, I'm bringing my friends to church with me this Sunday. Now I don't want you to embarrass me in front of my friends. And she said, okay, baby, no problem. But when the preaching got good, when the word began to go out, there went his mama. She slipped to the edge of her seat. She leaned to the side. And before she knew anything, she was standing up, talking back to the preacher. He was embarrassed that day. Went home and said, Mama, I asked you real nicely not to embarrass me. But one day he got hospitalized. Somebody slipped up on him and did harm to him. Tried to kill him. And he went to the hospital. And the doctor said that he can't move. He said, I'm going to put a nurse in this room and don't let him move. Don't let him get up and don't let him. If he has to go to the restroom, bring a pan to the bedside. Whatever you do, don't let him move. But the word of God, he was listening to. And he thought about the goodness of God. And before you knew it, Reverend Al, who was in the hospital that didn't supposed to move, he slipped to the edge of the bed. He leaned to the side. And before you knew it, he was standing up, giving God some praise. Let me tell you, the word of God will cause you to respond to what God, what God is saying. The word of God will cause you to respond. And it doesn't matter if you got a quiet demeanor or not. It doesn't matter if you, you shout on a regular basis or not when you go through some things. The word of God can make you whole. When you're going through something, when you've gone through something, God's word will make you reflect. The God's word will make you rely. And God's word will make you respond. Just keep hearing the word of God. Then he says to us, he says to us in verse number 10, that the joy 
of the Lord is your strength. My next point to you today is that you need to understand, you need to rejoice in the word. <laughs> I, I, I just stopped by to tell you just for a little while, you, you need to rejoice in the word. You, you need to get great joy. The word rejoice means that you need to have joy over and over and over again. These folk had messed up. They had messed up worse than you have messed up. They were sinners. They needed to be turned back to God. So they needed to rejoice in the word of God. The text declares that the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's why Big Mama and Big Daddy would tell you if they were here today, it doesn't matter what they do to me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I remember we used to bother my grandmother. You know, we were just ignorant little children that watched things go on and we, we only saw things as we saw them. Yes, sir. But let me tell you, senior saints, wow. old folk, wow. those who know the Lord can see some things that we can't see. Come on now. Baby, I'm telling you, hang in there. Come on now. Hang out with old folk. Yeah. Those who know the Lord can teach you some things. We, we were messing with grandmama and one day we built up a nerd to talk to her about. We noticed that when Miss Wayne King's daughter and Miss Wayne King's uh, wife would drive her home, she would have to sit in the back of the car. She wasn't allowed to sit in the front of the car. She would work 12 hours a day on her hands and her knees, scrubbing floors, seeing after her children, and feeding her children and cooking all day long. But when she got to ride home, Miss King brought her home, and she had to ride in the back of the car. So we, we got the nerve one day. We had to have a meeting before we go to our mom and dad and our grandparents. We, we had to have a meeting so we would get it right. And, and we, would, we would volley that thought back and forth so we could get it right. So we got the nerve one day to go to mama and say, mama, which was really our grandmama. We called her mama because she handled everything. We said, mama, you can't even sit in the front of the car. This woman doesn't care enough of you. And she think you are so dirty until you can't sit in the front of the car. You got to ride in the back of the car. And she spoke that day. She says, first of all, I keep her children. Secondly, I feed her family. The two most important things that's going on with a family, I take care of it for her. And you're right, I can't sit in the front of the car. But it's always the way you look at things. She said, what you need to understand is, I got a chauffeur and my chauffeur is white. What she's saying is, not only do I have a chauffeur and my chauffeur is white, I sit in the back of the car by myself. I'm able to kick my shoes off in the back of the car. I'm able to get some rest from being tired all day in the back of the car. I don't have to worry about traffic. I don't have to worry about driving. I got a chauffeur and my chauffeur is white. All right. It's always, it's always how you look at things. It's, it's, baby, young person, it's always how you look at things. It, they can say what they want to, they can call you what you what they want to, but at the end of the day, you're smiling all the way home in two weeks. You need to understand it's the way you look at things. And then they'll tell you, you just a token. Let me tell you, I've been a token all my life. And, and, and my tokenism is what got me here. I knew when to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. I knew how to act in their presence and how to act out of their presence. And because of my tokenism, I am the one that made a way and God blessed me in the midst of my way. It's all about how you look at things. It's all about how you look at things. You need to learn how to rejoice regardless of what your friends say. You need to learn how to rejoice regardless of what goes on around you. Look at the text. The text declares that, that, that the Levites, that Ezra, that Nehemiah told them to be still. Told them, in other words, be quiet. Told them to stop throwing a pity party. Told them to stop doing what they were doing. Told them to stop being down on themselves. This is the day of the Lord. Stand still for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You need to rejoice. So, so I said to you already, I said to you, you need to rely on the word. You need to reflect on the word. You need to respond to the word. You need to rejoice in the word. 
And finally, there ought to be a revival through the word. There ought to be a revival. Look at the text. The text declares, the text declares right here in the text, the text declares to them, be still for the day is holy and, and do not grieve and do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and they sent portions and rejoiced greatly because they understood the words of the Lord, because they understood God's word, because they understood what God was saying, then they understood what was declared unto them. Let me tell you, when you got a good understanding of the word, when you've done your word study, when, when, you, when you've understood the word and the word has been broken down to you, you ought to rejoice. Now look at what he says. There was a revival that took place, and the revival was they began to eat and drink. And they began to participate in the festival. There was a festival going on. There were people rejoicing during that time. They went up, they stopped moaning. And let me just stop to tell you, yes, you're guilty. Yes, you have sinned. But let me tell you, you can't be delivered from your sin if you don't accept God's deliverance. And let me tell you, God has delivered you. You have repented of your sin. Stop beating up yourself. Get up and eat. Get up and drink. You don't even have to spend a whole much, much more time moaning and groaning and weeping because you need to celebrate the festival. You need, to, you, need to be, you need to be revived. You need to be revived. And when you are revived, you look out for other people. All right. Look at what the text says. The text declares that not only were they revived, but their revival took legs. Their revival was down in their hearts. And the revival came out in their lives. Now, when you're fasting, you ought to be able to give something to somebody else. The Bible says they began to give portions to those that it wasn't prepared for. They began to give portions to those that had not been, been, been in the limelight. They began to give portions to those that are less fortunate than they were. Yes, we need a revival today. We need a revival in these great United States of America. Anytime we come to the conclusion that the, that the capital invasion was the worst thing on planet Earth, we need a revival. When we come to the conclusion that the, that the capital is a sacred place and the church is not a sacred place, we need a revival. When we come to the conclusion that people need to go to jail and they do need to go to jail for invading the capital, when we're overlooking black boys and black girls Black and brown children being shot every day. We need a revival. We need a revival. We need a revival because Congress was threatened. And that's the biggest thing that ever happened in America. Let me tell you, over 400 years of slavery, over 400 years and, and another 200 years of, of misusing black and brown people. If the capital invasion was the worst thing that they can see, let me just share with you, we need a revival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure you're right. Every day, a mass shooting. Every day, somebody of color being killed. Every day, somebody's being threatened. Every day, somebody's being pepper sprayed for no reason but just the color of their skin. We need a revival. And the revival is going to come when the church start relying on the word, start reading the word, start reflecting on the word, start regurgitating the word, start telling others about the word. We need a revival, and the revival will only come through the word of God. That's right. Amen. Do you need a revival? Yeah. Jesus made a way for a revival. Over 2,000 years ago, he made a way for the revival. Over 2,000 years ago, God gave his son, and his son gave his life. They took my Lord and your God, then they hung him on a cross. Over 2,000 years ago, they killed him for the sake of a revival. Yes, sir. Yeah, they killed innocent man, an innocent man, a man that was not guilty, was killed for you and for me. Yes, sir. Over 2,000 years ago, they killed my Lord and my God just for revival's sake. Yes, sir. They killed Jesus on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men killed him. They nailed him to the cross. They raised him up. They pierced him in his side. After he was dead, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water for the revival. Yes, sir. 
they, brought, they took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. So he did. He got up with, heaven, with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus caught a cloud and got out of here, sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's sitting there for our revival. He's sitting for our revival right there, for our revival. He, he's making intercession for us. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Just so we can be revived. Just so we can be brought back again. Just so we can be redeemed. Just so we can have a right to the tree of life. He's making intercessions for us. But the good news is, one of these days, that same Jesus that's sitting on the right hand of the Father, he will jump up at the trump of God. He will return at the trump of God. He will be caught up in midair. And the Bible says, don't worry about your kinfolk that died in Christ. Those who died in Christ shall be caught up first, and we will meet them in the air. And those of us who remain will be caught up. And we will rejoice yeah. and we'll be forever with him. The door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is accepted. Right. The door is open. The door is open. It is the word of God that keeps us. It is the word of God that strengthens us. The word of God we must read word of God on, on which we must rely. We must reflect on it. And today I give you the invitation to respond to it. And as you respond to the word of God, you can rejoice because we need a revival. The door is open. You can join the New Beginning Church. You can get to know him for yourself. Yes. The door is open. You can get to know Jesus in the departing of your sin. If you never received Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. You need to try him. You tried him, didn't work. You tried her, it was for nothing. You tried them, you didn't succeed. You even tried it, and it was for naught. I recommend Jesus, Jesus the Christ. If you can believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary, you can be saved right here, right now. If you believe that he died on Calvary, rose from the dead, you ought to come to Jesus. If you just join me in prayer and asking Jesus to come into your life in this simple prayer, you can get to know him. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, we believe that you're born again. When you die, you, you are going to heaven. There may be others of you who are just like the people in the book, have walked away from God, who've been serving idol gods, who have left the church, who have left the God we serve. This is your moment where you come back to him. He's saying, though your sins be as scarlet, he will wash you whiter than snow. Let me pray with you. Lord, we ask you to touch those and convict them as you have done in this day. We ask you to bless them, Father God, and draw them back to you and bless them to see the need to come to you. And Lord, we ask you to keep them as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You can just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to welcome you to this family of faith. To those of you who have received Christ, we praise God for you. And those of you who rededicated and recommitted, we praise God for you. Please inbox me and let me know that you have submitted yourself to the awesome God that we serve. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We are praying for Sister Dar Doris Bridgeworth. Sister Doris Bridgeworth, we're lifting you in prayer. We ask asking God to touch and to heal as only he can. We're also praying for Sister Doris Gore that the Lord will continue to bless and continue to keep in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Brother Moore. We're praying that God continues to, to make himself known in your presence. It is now offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord. I say it's offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. Father God, we thank you now for these gifts. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for blessing us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us to give, and as we give, we give not grudgingly nor out of necessity. For God, we know you love cheerful givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. For those of you who are not present with us in the flesh, but you're present with us live on this broadcast, you can give in two means. One, you can give by way of our Zelle account. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. And also you can give by mailing your checks to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. If you're ready to give in the sanctuary, will you stand where you are? Starting from the rear to the front, come now and bring forth your tithes and our offerings. Amen. Amen. Again, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459 PO Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 775 459 I'm sorry, 459 77459 77459 Yes, Lord Thank you, God Let us thank God for Hazel and our musician for the day. Thank God for Hazel. Thank God for Hazel for, for being our musician today. She played more songs today than Sister Davis plays when she's here. I'm telling you, training, training can do it. Training can, can make a difference. Training can make a difference. Sister Richard, training makes a whole lot of difference. That, <laughs> amen. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church today. Thank you for being a, a part of our service. Thank you for coming in and coming out. May God bless you and keep you. Let us stand to be this mess. I'm sure you have not forgotten it yet, so we're going to recite our mission and our vision statement. I'm sure you have not forgotten it. I'm sure you still got it. I'm sure you still have it. You're still mindful of it. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Father God, we thank you now, Father, for your word. We pray that you bless us to always rely on your word. Bless us to reflect on your word. Bless us to respond to your word, Father God. Bless us, Father God, that we will rejoice in the midst of your word. And finally, Lord, give us a revival through your word. Bless us to go forth and win souls for you and revive us again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. 
Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join each other by saying, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. You